The opportunities in technology are just just massive. From endless profit, architectural architectural profit, um, their their client experience, um, team team happiness. Episode ninety seven. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host Ryan Willard, and this week I was actually travelling around. This has just happened pre COVID nineteen disaster struck and I had a good opportunity to speak with the two founders of a brilliant new uh, platform which is serving the construction, architecture and engineering industries called Weaver Build. And um, I got to speak with the founders, the co-founders Greg Keane and Lyndon Dover, who have developed a passion for construction uh, when they st- were studying architectural history together at university. And um, they have created a brilliant platform which allows users to enter their project details and request the sort of Weaver Marketplace introductions which then manages their studio list of professionals and much, much more. It's a powerful platform that allows architects to create powerful consultant teams by providing introductions to architect-reviewed professionals such as main contractors, structural engineers, improved inspectors and measured surveyors. The software allows for the selecting and managing of project team professionals, as well as providing analysis reports and support with the management of Weaver professionals. So both Greg and Lyndon have got really interesting backgrounds in property, construction and architecture. Greg initially went into the management of an architectural interiors design studio uh, and then actually qualified as a surveyor. And Lyndon was working as a building site manager and subsequently as a property developer. And through this shared experience in the construction industry, both Greg and Lyndon identified a big missing in the market and started to develop Weaver Build, which is what we discuss here and how they've gone about growing it. So sit back, relax and enjoy Greg Keane and Lyndon Dover. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars, and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work, but it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself. We can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of. And I'd also love to hear more about your business, what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020. So there's no charge or any obligation with this call, just simply to find out how our content has been of value. And if we get that far and with your permission, of course, what might be next, what what might be possible and how Business of Architecture UK could be supportive of that. Does that sound fair? Brilliant. So if you want to book a 15-minute chat with me, I'm calling these calls the BOA UK Discovery Call or just simply a chat with Ryan. Use the link in the information and I look forward to speaking to you. Now Greg, Lyndon, welcome to the Business of Architecture. Absolute pleasure to have you both here in these very interesting times that we're living in. Yeah, very excited. So in our, in our empty office. In your completely, completely empty office. So, right. so it's very, very, very good. Um, and you guys are founders of Weaver Build, um, which is quite an uh, exciting technological platform that's empowering architects to sort of with the tendering process and being able to build uh, other consultant teams. So I guess the first question is, What's how how did this come about? Where did you guys get the idea for mm. wanting to uh, support, empower architects, build their tendering processes? Yeah, uh, I mean, we 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 went to university together and met uh, 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 in 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 the architectural uh, his, history um, uh, uh, course. So um, kind of our 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 sources. Or, and passion has always been architecture, right? But not as practicing architects, but more as observers and and users. Um, and, and then we went sort of different ways. I I went into um, I became an, uh, an accountant actually, uh, so chartered accountant, 
And then I uh, founded a, an architectural interiors studio with an architect, uh, interior designer. Um, and I was managing the business side of it yeah. um, and the project management. So making sure that everything was delivered on time and, uh, and on budget as much as, as one could, uh, could, could, could deliver. Um, and in that time also became a chartered surveyor. Um, uh, so you were collecting professions. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> I was collecting professions, and I, I, I don't know. I, t- I tend to sort of get bored after five years. Yeah, and, and want to do something completely different. And actually, those two professions um, are, are ideally suited to to, yeah. to, to to Weaver. And I had a passion for technology, just naturally. Always did from games when I was younger mm. to adopting the latest phone or the latest technology. So I'm a, I'm an early adopter. I just take whatever comes quickly, like electric cars. Um, and so I knew that the, there was a massive opportunity in where I was uh, at, 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 with technology. So, so I just sort of started, started doing a, a spider diagram of what problems my clients uh, are, are encountering. And, and then it just was a massive, sort of, uh, uh, became a massive um, string of, of issues. And it's just also manual and, and 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 slow and antiquated and it, it was sort of ripe for disruption mm. and it, i was reading up online and there's a kind of a, a famous report that mckinsey the consultants um issued which was uh, ranking essentially all the world industries um from pharmaceuticals to 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 um, transport as to how the technology um, has impacted them over the last 40 years. So, um, you know, and the graphs go straight up for transport and straight up for pharmaceuticals and for construction, it goes down. And so it's the second least disrupted uh, industry in the mm-hmm. world after agriculture. So for me, that was just a pivot, pivot sort of moment of mm-hmm. eureka. I've got to change, change tack and, and actually this is an opportunity for me. And so Linda and I, Started meeting um, early in the morning before work, and we hashed out a plan. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let Lyndon tell his story as well. <laughs> um, I think there was a shared frustration of trying to put design teams together that we were both having. Uh, my my background was more construction side, so I was working on multiple private client um, extensions, helping mm. um, people, you know, homeowners, make sure they had the right design teams together and delivering those. And then I moved on to more kind of larger construction, working as a main contractor firm, um, working for the likes of Grosvenor Estates, doing kind of embassy conversions and large basement digouts. And then I, I feel like it's a kind of culmination, weave as a culmination of my, I suppose, my experiences as well, um, is that I went on to do asset management in a successful um, a property startup one fine day. And then after that, I became a property developer. And I think it was when I was a property developer, finding it frustrating trying to get reliable contractors, mm. reliable consultants that I could draw on easily when I had an issue or a pain point. And that's when Greg and I started to kind of meet up regularly going, mm. oh, God, how, how do we, there must be a way to solve this with technology. How do we disrupt mm. the status quo? Yeah. Um, that was really how it kind of yeah, came No together. architects go online to find a, a builder. There's just no trust. Yeah. yeah. So we're the first online platform that you can trust because... All our, our contractors are peer re- reviewed. Yeah. Only architects review them, yeah. um, which is much more powerful than word of mouth, essentially, because you've got five, ten reviews of a contractor instead of one friend. Yeah, and and so how long is the the how does the platform work? What's the sort of the, yeah. the guts of it, and and what's the what has been the sort of evolution of it? What's what have you? had to do to get it to where it is right now yeah so I'll, I'll start with, with with how it works so it's essentially it's a it's a free um free software for architects so the professionals um pay us when they win a, a project so when they get get work so mm. it, it it really um benefits everyone um it's sort of natural marketing costs for professionals so it's a free software um that allows um architect teams so studios to really uh, source and manage um, their professional network from surveyors to contractors to kitchen fabricators, metal fabricators, and the odd ones like sound consultants, things you need once in the blue moon. So you you share that um, a bit like a CRM, a bit like a list of contacts. So 
everyone you read you know if you read a magazine and you see a new potentially a, a new um, uh, uh, engineer you might want to use you just enter it into into your um, studio's uh, account and everyone can see that for the next project if there's kind of a, a missing engineer mm. uh, or a quote they need so you so everyone in the studio has a login um, to one account in there they ha- they each have their their own professional networks that they, that they share with everyone and then the other side of it is 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 is, is, is a projects um, uh, uh, a feature where you list all your projects, what stage they are, um, what what work stage they are, and what that team looks like today. So you've got the um, the in-house team. So who's the lead architect? Who's the who are the um, who are the other um, uh, team members? And then you've got um, the, the kind of sourcing of each type of professional, right? Um, uh, according to the stage um, of, of of the project. So you, you you might not you might know already who's the measure surveyor, so you just enter it in. You might know already, um, but you might not know who who the contract is going to be. So there's a whole tendering process that you can start on the platform right there. And and the platform gives you the ability to be able to communicate with the whole team instantaneously it's, as well. And exactly. Yeah. So it's it's really it's all about saving um, time um, and making projects run s- smoother. So mm. our belief is that teams um, make projects so a successful projects that should because everyone came together um, so one b- uh, party will surveyor can completely stall the project and make it a disaster so actually the best projects are, are, are the ones that where the whole team comes together yeah um, and, and so what we want to do is um, uh, n- not use thousands of emails and phone calls and and use uh, a cloud software to share stuff like documents. So the architect issues it um, just in one click, uploads the document and it just tags it with a date and then he, he or she will just tick who should see that document and then that just sends it um, out in, 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 a, in a notification to the professional, so to the surveyor or the engineer. And then he, he or she reads it and that again will 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 link back to the architect and tell and and tell the platform who's read it and who hasn't. Mm. So you, you're you're constantly sharing uh, documents, stage progress, uh, communication. So questions you can create kind of your communication groups a bit like Slack. Yeah. So you can create your own um, uh, um, uh, channels of, of of communication. Client can be involved as well. Client can see what what's going on. What what so that. Again, they're ringing you less with frustration because they can see the progress um, uh, uh, from a whole team perspective. Mm. Um, but Ron, maybe a question for you: like when you're practicing architecture and you're looking after the tender process, do you ever find that contractors come back in different formats with your um, schedule of works? Or yeah, well, yeah. When we said we were spoken last time on the yeah. phone, and you know, I've often gone through the process of writing out a detailed schedule of works even gone to the extent of like here I want you to price this yeah. piece individually and like I've tried to make it make it as formulaic as possible so that a, a, a contractor could just go out and you know I want to know what that costs what that costs what that costs mm-hmm. but you'll always typically get back an A4 sheet that looks like it's been cut and paste yeah. of another job and they've kind of mishmashed it together exactly, and now yeah. you're and, and again you know tender dates as well trying to get that into control of mm-hmm. like you know when have them all come back at the same time that's often yeah all over the all over the shop so i think it's that that's sort of what we're what we're putting together is a process to try and help streamline that and take that heavy lifting away from your practice as an mm. architect we want you to be able to concentrate on the more important things the the less sexy thing yeah you know, the more sexy things um where you're winning business you're designing um, you're not having to pick up the phone a million times to, to make sure that the um, the builder is actually producing uh, the information you need in the right format you want. Mm. Um, so yeah, apart from bringing back schedules um, in the right format, the other things that we're kind of taking away are that back and forth to try and make sure yeah. that um, builders are actually turning up on time to meet you and the client at a site meeting in a block. Um, so we're doing that through... And the engineer yeah. has been informed as well that they should turn up <clears throat> and, so, and everyone's so how, how do you how do you quality control who uses the platform and the and the mm. builders and how and because yeah. that obviously is one of the most difficult things for architects is this 
trust of an architect, yeah. you know, and there's, and there's services like Checker Trade and exactly. these types of things, but still it's often not the right kind of builder that you're looking yeah. for. And uh, so, so, I mean, first of all, it's the, the platform does, uh, um, it is really first and foremost allowing the architect to use that existing network. So it's not just for sourcing um, new uh, professionals. It's first and foremost, who's in your network and how many more quotes do you need to get a full market price? Oh, I see. So you actually bring your own kind of contact base. Exactly. You put it onto the platform. It, it, it's you... it's ring fence for that studio. So they can those contacts are only for them. Right. And then they can request on the platform a new con- new professionals Got that it. they don't know <clears throat> to quote for that for that job, whether it's a, uh, an engineer quote fee or a, or a contractor. Uh, full tender, so it's 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 a whole it's a whole network. What you have and what you don't have yet, and it's just within within about two hours, you you will get three contractors um, telling you that they're interested to quote. So that could have taken probably a week or more of mm. calling around. So um, first and foremost, it's it's that ability to 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 just to, just to get quotes uh, and 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 your client a price within hours. Um, and in terms of the the, the, net, the network that we bring to it, it it's purely peer-to-peer reviews. Mm. So instead of relying on consumers, so homeowners who've only used mm. one contractor once and have never never done another project, reviewing most of them actually fake uh, as per some BBC um, uh, research uh, t- two years ago. Um, so... Ours are only reviewed by 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 architects, so all our the entire network is really um, a, a, a sort of self review um, of of from the architectural industry. Yeah, great. And so you've got that that peer to peer reviews of architects. Yeah, and that's the main way that you're kind yes of associating and with. We also do um, typical financial checks, director's yeah. checks. We look at um, the debt they're carrying. So we really understand who the contractor is. And we go as far as asking you know, PQQ questions so that we're putting the right contractors matched with the right projects. And obviously, when you're entering your new project details as an architect on your own studio um, login area, then the, the algorithm is picking up the right contractor who's matched for skill set, availability, location. Um, safe in the knowledge that we've already done a lot of those initial checks that you would want to do in the practice. So yes. calling around, speaking to other architects, maybe speaking to some people you went to, to architecture school with or you know, people that you trust, your kind of core people you go to, that can be done by us uh, and you can trust that we're doing that. So that it's just taking more hassle out of your day again. Um, so you're presented with architect, peer-reviewed builders whenever you need ones um, alongside in a central place the ones you already know or the homeowners put forward. And have you found when, when architects come to like putting their contacts onto the platform, because even this is an alien, can be an alien idea for many architects. Exactly. You know, the idea of using a CRM My black system. book is now online. It's not no longer yes. on an Excel spreadsheet on my computer. Or a Rolodex. No, or a Rolodex yeah. or and, phone. And, and how have you found or... Mm. I'm, I'm interested in the kind of culture of architects adopting this type of technology. And it's a very, it makes so much sense. And it's, you know, you'd kind of imagine that most of us as practicing architects would have a good, robust system mm. for quality assurance of builders. Often it's, that, that doesn't exist. And it is kind of, you know, I, I have met architects who have been sole practitioners or running small mm. practices who have who will often use different builders for each project because they still haven't found the, the trust. Mm. How Have you met much resistance or how have you uh, kind of helped or facilitated the culture for architects to adopt technology? Yes. Good question. It's a great question. Um, I think for me, when I'm talking to architects over the phone and demonstrating on one of our demo calls Mm. um, where we share screen and show them the product and actually I show them how it's working for other practices other practices already adopting uh, Weaver and you show them um, an example of um, ones that we've put into the um, professional CRM area 
they suddenly see the searchability of it. Mm. It's not just a static list of um, contacts. It's suddenly something they can share with their other um, studio members. Um, and they, the com combining of all of your um, professional contacts in one area means that you can really search for it fast and get the right person. You don't have to mm. shout across the studio or you don't have to... Well, in these remote days, it's yeah. more like trying to call someone up and disrupt 10, 15 minutes of their time mm. um, just to ask a, a, a very simple question as to um, which projects did so-and-so work on and is, is he or she reliable to use on this project? Um, the studio owner can also um, uh, 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 have a have a vetting process, so they can actually say um, that this 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 professional can be used um, for us, or is in sin bin we do not use anymore. Yeah. So there's that that quality assurance um, that can be centrally controlled from from the studio uh, owners or studio managers. And what's the compatibility like in terms of like cross-platform mm. communication so say I mean this this is another sort of thought like you know, you've got your black book yeah. as an architect now you're going to sort of it might be a physical black book or a viral text yeah. and you're now putting it onto a CRM system how is it easy for that CRM, CRM system to be accessed by other platforms or other bits of software or I mean, at, at, at the moment, it, it, we, we take security really seriously. Right. And I think that that data can be decades worth of experience built right. up. So we take it very seriously and we have high, um, a high um, uh, essentially ring fencing of, of that data to that studio. Um, and you can export it in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a CSV or Excel okay. format yeah. and upload it. Uh, but there are plans to... To synchronize that with um, Workflow Max or, or and, uh, other tools that architects use every day, um, so that there is a quick uh, um, synchronization of data. Um, but we have lots of ways to help architects collate their data from things like business cards or physical Rolodexes or Outlook or your phones. Mm. And we've got uh, you know different because architects store them in different ways. Yeah. So we've, we've understood from mm. all the people we've gone out to that there's a solution to get it into one uploadable CSV to put onto the Weaver build professionals yeah. area. And the majority of the responses you get on the phone, because you're more on the phone than me, is, is that yes, it, it makes total sense. And actually we've thought about it before, but we've never taken the time to, to, to deal with this problem. So yeah. we've because we've, we've always yeah. got something that's more um, urgent to do. <laughs> You've got the drawings to get out. You've got the yeah. drawings to get out, as, as opposed to um, let's sit down and, and do this once and for all, because it will be once and for all. Once it's there, it's stored in a systematic way, mm. clean data, it's not in different... Well, different... It, it, it's so exciting to hear these types of uh, platforms being developed, because you know, my sort of passion with architects is to, have, to run systemized, systematized mm. practices, and obviously... Yeah trying to rebuild a system from scratch every time as well is the classic architect way of doing things. So being able to uh, leverage, you know, the, the thoughtfulness that goes into a piece of software like this is, is massively beneficial for a practice. Um, I suppose I'm interested then is what's your process been from inception through to where you are now? Like mm. what are the sort of, what are the, what were the kind of key milestones in development of the software? How did you... You know, you guys have an idea. Yeah. Then what did you do? I mean, I mean, there's two things. A for software, you, you need large amounts of investment. Yes. Um, so we um, we're backed by venture capital. So we're backed by a a, 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 a New York um, based um, a, a firm that purely invests in startups. Um, actually, they purely invest in in marketplaces all all around the world, mm. um, and they love. They, they they love the, the the idea of something focused on on architects um, and and that being a, a, a network that hasn't been brought online. Um, so yeah, so first of all is you've got to have the funding to do that. I mean, we're, we're spending considerable sums a month on developing the software. Um, um, but I think the secret secret source is 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 to to the speed of of um, of software development and. And um, why, as an industry, it's the most um, uh, ad advanced is is testing. There's a real um, culture of testing um, everything yeah. constantly. So um, 
with something called founder bias, which can basically like as a manager, you are biased towards your thoughts. You yes. think that you what you think is the, is is has the most truth, but actually you have no idea what your client's thinking, mm. um, what, what, how that fee proposal has gone down, what that 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 the, the font on the proposal, um, how, how did that change their their emotions or whatever. So what we do is we 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 constantly run tests, and micro tests of small samples, like ten samples of 10, 20. So today we're running about twenty tests, um, probably finishing one every, uh, finishing each every three weeks. So every month we're finishing ten tests, and these are small tests. Like, mm. what what happens if you pick up the phone at six in the evening? Uh, what happens if we um, if we uh, uh, change the number of tender t- tender seats to five, so people are getting five quotes instead of four? Um, what what happens if we change the color of the button? Um, on the on the uh, on on the on the software, will that cognitively help the user and therefore prevent yeah. um, a, a, a attrition? And these things can make minute changes, but the speed of 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 no, of of, um, of learning is incredible. Mm. So, when you ask me the question, you, you know, how did you start and 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 get to where you are today? It, it's just a, an evolution of a, a million different uh, variables that we are trying to change as quickly as possible to, yeah. to find the right formula. And that's the kind of secret of software, is, 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 is this kind of scientific approach to everything that you do. You don't know whether it's going to work or true, so you don't believe in your, in your ideas too much. You just go and test it. Well, that, that's really interesting because a lot of... Companies, that's where the, the mistake can happen. Is like you end up going down your yeah. belief of what you think is a great product, and you yeah. can invest your life savings into it, and then you launch it to the market, and then yeah. it's like don't, you build it for years. Don't, don't care. And then, yeah, like, yeah. And so, so that iterative exactly process. Forty percent of startups fail because they don't find a, a fit to the market. Yeah. So their product doesn't fit the market because they're not getting out of the building. They're not talking to their users. Then they're not listening enough. Mm. They're they they're investing in sort of secret secret building and and then launching and then no one yeah. comes. So, and it's well, we never did a big launch. We're just constantly iterating, constantly changing, and 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 launching new versions, um, and then testing uh, a, a new idea with with a small sample and seeing how they like it before building it fully. And what's the relationship been like with the with your VC funds? Then? Mm. How did you how how do you establish a relationship like that? And is that like would you recommend that that path, or is it you know you now beholden to investors and yeah, it's certain, true. I mean, you've, got, you've got a certain fiscal discipline that you've got to be adhering to, or yeah, and you lose a bit of control in that their, their, their shareholders. Um, I think though, if you think that your idea is big, and we think it's really big, because yeah. imagine all the studios in the UK <clears throat> using Weaver to build their teams, um, so sourcing surveyors and uh, um, kitchen fabricators and staircase fabricators purely from from other architects' reviews online. That's that's a big um, amount of 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 uh, that's a huge value. Mm. It's a huge market. So I think because we're working in a big market and the opportunity is big, you've got to develop quickly. So you've got to develop software quickly. And you can only do that with external investment. Yeah. So if you don't do that, you develop too, too slowly and then you essentially get, get eaten up by someone else who has the idea uh, and can do it quicker than you. So it's, you know, it's, it's think about how quickly uh, online taxis or, or f- uh, taxis on your phone grew if you did it slowly um, you would never have succeeded so yeah. there's a kind of a, a, a speed of of software development that's required and that can only happen with I think external they, investment I think they also look for people who have been in the industry before mm. as, as a help you know some people can come up with the idea and execute mm. it really well but I think yeah, more and more that's a trend yeah having that sort of background yeah. and having the backdrop of testing within a framework we understood from being part of design teams or having your own architectural interior practice, seeing that. Exactly, yeah. you know, Especially under- in B2B software, yeah. they like 
founders come from the industry. Yeah. Because uh, because we know we have a kind of a strong Hypothesis. gut as yeah. to what people want. Uh, as I say, you know, we never we never believe completely in in our ideas. We test them, mm. but uh, we we have a strong strong feeling of how builders like to be treated, how architects um, um, work and, and their processes. So I think that that's what they look for now. Uh, more and more, whereas 20 years ago, if you look at uh, the founders of eBay, they were just young, young in their twenties and had a good idea, that, but they had no knowledge of selling or buying goods. Mm. That they, they didn't need that. But now, this massive B two B investment in in Europe, especially. And and how does your your two roles differ? Yeah. And how did you? How have you? What's been the key to making that relationship between you work? Because it's Sometimes it can be the best thing when two friends get together, and sometimes, yeah, true. It, sometimes it can have its own yeah. conflicts and dramas. What's been, who does what, and how did you apportion those things, and what's the sort of source to having a good business relationship? Yeah, yeah. I think being complementary. I think um, having mm. different strong skill sets. So I'm more sales and traditional marketing. Mm. And Greg, you're more. Yeah, Lynn's more of an extrovert and more of an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> that works quite well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think I think definitely. Being different, um, so we actually have a list uh, of, of of responsibilities, maybe about thirty different subjects or silos, marketing or sales and team um, team uh, um, a growth, um, and so yeah, we we split it that way. So I I do more funding, uh, team team growth, so recruitment, um, general strategy. Lyndon does more sales marketing. And what, what have been the sort of strategies that you've had in terms of marketing and, and sales? What, what have been the most important aspects of those systems in, your, in growing this business? I think for us it's the network effect, really. Um, so the fact that every contractor who comes on board or tries to come on board and get through our vetting process brings at least two to three architects with them as a reference and so then we're calling up the architects and we're saying, hi, how do, what do you think of, of, of Bob the Builder? And they're like, oh, well, he was fantastic. Or well, actually, he wasn't so great. Why? Why are you asking? And then they're like, and then we tell them what we are. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. And so there's a real natural um, way of, of onboarding the best builders and the best architects. And I think there's a currency in, in the projects that we have on our platform. So we're, you know, builders are looking for projects that have a full tender pack and a clear timeline for delivery. And the architects are looking for the best builders in a short time space of time, which allows them to get on with their day to day. So I think that's been the most important thing mm. uh, for us and our, our growth. Um, so yeah. So but building a kind of a culture and yeah, definitely yeah. as well. I mean, it, it will have a it will naturally exponentially grow. So it's an effect that you see in in like in, in eBay and Uber in a lot of the most successful software companies is it's called network effect so just to p- put it into perspective for us um, at one point the best builders will will know that all the projects are the best projects are with weaver coming from weaver's uh, users so they're gonna all gonna look for their work via us and less and less for word of mouth uh, the other side of the spectrum architects will know that the best contractors are with weaver and, and and do exactly the same thing. So it kind of starts to compound. So it starts to compound, and it, it, it means that that effect, effectively you are creating a, a a network that is super um, strong and trustworthy. Mm. You were saying earlier about when you were kind of identifying an industry need, and you were looking at the statistics and saw how yeah. construction had been relatively slow comparatively to yeah. other industries in, in adopting technology. Now, having you know developed and built your own platform and being kind of well embedded in the construction industry, why do you think there, there is that resistance, or why do you think construction has been slow to yeah. adopt technology? Um, I think complexity. Mm. So you can you can you know, commoditize most industries, but it's very hard to commoditize construction because every project is inherently different. Mm. So that means that it's been the highest hanging fruit 
<laughs> so uh, if you like, software has gone for the lowest hanging fruit over the last 30 years. So what's the lowest, and the low, then the next lowest, and the next the next lowest? What, what do you mean by that? So they, so the, so so the you know the first the the, the first ideas were were, were like, I'll I'll take the example of marketplaces. So Craigslist was the lowest hanging fruit. So that's just a, a listing Got of, of 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 goods that people want to sell, like a digital notice yeah. board, essentially. And then the next yeah. evolution to that was eBay. With a bit more control, a bit more um, uh, policing of of the marketplace, the next evolution to that was a marketplace just for secondhand trainers. You know, you know, so completely focusing on on a specific um, a- area of the market or cars, secondhand cars, and so if you like, um, construction is is. It's complex, so it's it's always been pushed back for software developers or founders and, and capital, uh, venture capital investment. Um, but um, I think it's it's yeah, I I think it's definitely a big opportunity now mm. that, that 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 is growing quickly. And 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 how how do you find contractors adopting it? Because that there can be a real mm. spectrum of again, like we were, we were saying earlier about you know there are a lot many architects who been practicing for many many years they've done things on you know pen and paper and excel mm. spreadsheets and many contractors are the same and sometimes particularly smaller outfits are even more mm. uh, kind of that's right in, yeah. embedded in their own they're mobile as well yes they're all, all always in their car yes we did a survey interesting just to sort of jump in on that uh, on our on our contractors and we 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 found that they spend on average a minimum minimum three hours a day in their car three hours, that's that's the head of the business. Mm. Imagine that and then and then the and then their clients are calling up um, you know with questions about invoicing which they're having to push back because they actually need people on site and materials on site. Right. So at the end of the day, um, what they need to do for their business gets pushed back to eight o'clock in the evening. Um, and so what we do is we build it for their mobile. Yeah. So we use WhatsApp um, to send out the leads. So they so it speeds up a, a, oh, a lead request by forty eight hours. So instead of an, you send an email to a contract saying, "Oh, would you like to attend on this project?" You'll get an answer forty eight hours. That's later. smart. WhatsApp. Mm, instant. I think it's it's noticing those trends like through, as you say, multiple iterations over the last yeah. few years and saying, okay, well, builders are predominantly mobile around, even if they're you know, medium-sized contracts, they're still in the car or on site a lot. Mm. Um, and the architect's mainly desk-based unless they're meeting a client. It's completely opposite. It's so, totally opposite. So like, how do you manage the tech build with that in mind? Mm. Um, but you're right, like some um, architects aren't like, readily adopting technology and nor are, are contractors, but it's trying to make it as easy as possible so they can, and also making sure we match the right contractor and architect up for the project. It's, it's also enforcing rules, so mm. not allowing a tender to be uh, uploaded unless it's complete. Right. So building software, again, no, will solve solves that immediately. Um, so it's 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 effectively forcing quality yes um, through uh, software which can notify someone every day until they do something or uh, can impose like restrictions to to their to, to, to their platform access if they behave badly mm. which is what we do we we have a three month sort of uh, ban on projects if they're not communicating well enough so they have to perform wow. and that kind of that kind of like if you like um, part of pressure on them to perform does not come from the government because mm. there's no license to be a contractor so we're kind of like like the we're effectively the government's uh, licenses of contractors you, you become your own sort of policing yeah, exactly. platform yeah. if you yeah. like and it benefits right. everyone it, it benefits yeah. them it te- because they haven't been to business school yeah they're, they're learning. It's a really hard job for them to understand how how to how to do a sum in an Excel spreadsheet. What What's been the, the biggest obstacle for you guys over the last few? When, when did When did the When it, did you begin um, the platform? We, we, we've been B two B, so architect focused because we were consumer focused for one year, for now uh, a year and a half. And what What made you? Chat. I'll come back to that question. Yeah. of What's been the biggest obstacle? But what What made the shift between Consumer mm. focused to being architect focused. Yeah, you want to go. Yeah, to that? I think when we were having those initial ideas, still working at different companies, and we were 
um, talking about how can we go out and test lots of value propositions. We had about 15, 20 different value propositions. We were kind of wondering whether they were useful for homeowners to start with. Um, and I think we went out and did about 35 breakfast meetings in people's homes and talked about their pain points and were, were trying to find out what this business could be. And I think we quickly realised that homeowners is a long discovery in terms of um, before concept design, when they hopefully employ an architect, mm. um, it's that bit that takes a long time for them to buy a house, you know, think about what they want to do to it, then employ a design team, and then think about, you know, actually connecting with... Who how they, much the cost much, is, like, yeah. such a pain for a homeowner? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, funding and t- the right time and, you know... Anyway, so there's a long tail there. So it, 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 we understood very quickly that actually if we wanted to have a scalable business that was going to add value um, and have a repeatable way of, of talking to architects with many projects, not just a homeowner who does one every five, ten years, it was a much better business case to, to talk to professionals mm. and architects and put those guys at the centre of the marketplace. Right, and then because, they're, they're, they're ready to go, yeah. essentially. And also we understand that you know architects have a really tough job. You know, where tens of hats all the time thinking about the client and helping them go from an idea through to something that's delivered so I think for us it, it, it was, that was the unique kind of eureka moment like right architects are having a tough time how can we solve that with, with technology mm. and I mean it goes back to your question as to why construction is, is behind well it's so much easier to uh, get bids on, on, a, on, on, a, on a computer on eBay than it is to get bids on a, on a project um, with uh, probably 10,000 nails, um, I guess how many screws. So the moving parts of, of, a, of a construction project are so complex yes. that you can't just build a, um, a simple piece of software uh, that doesn't, doesn't follow the norms of the industry. So what we've done is gone and copied exactly how tendering works today. Um, and all, just automated it, um, so we, we're 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 not changing the way people do things. Mm. We've built software that does what the way people do things today. Yeah, and that's what nobody had done before, and that's why I think construction takes a bit more time to 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 build software for. So, but, yeah, so it's, it's really interesting you say that. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of understanding the complexity, not just of the process, but of the way that people yeah. actually do things. Like you say, this you know, just a, a simple observation. Like builders spend a lot of time in their cars, and yeah. their vans, mm. going from site to site. They're not; it's not a desk-based job. Exactly. That's, there's quite a leap of just understanding the psychology behind. Yeah. Why is he answering my email? Well, because he's not in front of a computer until yeah. eight in the evening, and he's got. It's, it's a seriously tough job being a build, being an SME builder because yes. you have no office mm. um, structure. So, if naturally they're giving their clients and users a bad um, a, 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 a bad service um, from a paperwork perspective. I think thinking about the business of architecture as well, like it's it's understanding the pain points that you guys are going through mm. and it's knowing um, when fees are coming for architects too and it's saying, okay guys, look, this is the normal um, RIVA stages of work, you know, here's some software that kind of follows that um, and we're going to signpost when it would be a good time for you guys to think about builders. I know you're busy making your tender pack look pretty and getting out the door and hopefully getting the fee from your from your homeowner. But look, why don't you start thinking about contractors a few weeks before the tender pack starts? Mm. And that will help you get a much better choice of builders that get you on the site quicker, get yeah. your fees in in quicker, yeah. get everyone so it's just it's happier. It's being that sort of helping hand mm. um, in the background. So, so for free. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so, so the the contractor is the one that takes the cost of the fees. Yes. Essentially, that's how that's how you uh, manage. only when they win. So, the model today online. So, my builder or rated people, um, they charge lead fees. Yeah. So you pay for a lead. We don't do that. We only pay when they. We only charge when they win the project, right. which they love because it means they don't have to invest up front for on 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 leads that go nowhere yeah they can actually wholeheartedly um, go for a, a, a tender and 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 only when they win and it's a viable um, project do, for them does it make the tendering process from the contractor side easier and mm. faster and cheaper because I'm one of the one of the complaints I often hear from mm. contractors is like oh well it's going to take me two days to sit down and yeah do so this. that's something that we've 
we've been thinking about for years. So it, we haven't cracked that yet because I think it's going to take quite a lot of um, software um, uh, energy. Mm. But effect, my idea um, to today would be effectively cr- um, make the schedule of work an online form. Mm. So instead of a, you know an Excel spreadsheet which you can just completely mess around with, it is a form where every cell has to be filled out uh, properly, um, and only when that's all filled out properly can you actually submit it. Right. Okay. So um, that's quality control. Yeah. Um, and the other uh, piece would be saving time by allowing. Um, contractors just to input their rates so what are their labor rates and what are their um, uh, uh, material rates and say I want to make 10% overhead and profit and then Weaver does the entire fills out the entire schedule for them right okay so So that will save that will go from three to four weeks uh, tendering to and, and possibly it could end up saving the contractor like a QS fees if they're using Correct. QS to do exactly. That. I think not for very large projects that would work, but for for smaller, more um, modular work, mm. that definitely should be happening. And, and, and then they, then they know where they're making their profit. Yeah, and and they don't have to look at every single detail. Especially when you've got homeowners who don't want to pay for a cost consultant at that, yeah. that price bracket, it works really well, it complements. And also, again, thinking about the architect, you know, they don't want to take on that responsibility or have to oversee that. Um, they want to make sure that it's done properly. So having the tools to be able to make that effective. Do you have quality control in terms of what information the architects must be putting in to, yes, get, a, to get a good... Uh, yes, window? and there's a surprising uh, failure rate there as well. Interesting. Um, I mean, the worst for me is PDF schedules of works. Right. I mean, what are they expecting to get back with that? Like, it's going to be a complete nest of issues where things aren't filled out, yeah. misunderstood. Um, it's, it'll take the builder s- twice the amount of time translating that into, well, into, that's into Excel. Well, I've, I've tried doing that myself. Yeah. It's yeah. just been an absolute disaster. So for me, that's, that, that's like... Uh, you know, we don't allow tenders without um, schedules that are in Excel today. Right. But you've, that, are not in, that are not in Excel. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. They have to be in Excel. Because we, we offer a tender summary report at the end of the tender process. So you hopefully source contractors from the marketplace or we've helped centralise ones that you've found from your studio. We've helped manage the tender right through to the tender submission date. And at that point... Um, we will not only send the architect an email with all the submissions in one email, but we'll also attach a, a tender report from Weaver. And that has all the summaries of all the builders that have been, you know, non-Weaver builders and Weaver builders side by side, showing, you know, what the preliminary is, what the substructure was, all, all of the line items. So you can easily see who's higher, who's lower, or who's missing um, issue, uh, issues uh, for some of the line items. And also it has the scores, um, the average scores as well from the architects, uh, who, who kind of gave us those initial vetting right. scores. So it's a great way, it's a great summary to share with your homeowner, saying, look, I'm going to go and do my forensic uh, tender analysis, but here's some, some summary to help you start thinking about um, who's best fit for uh, negotiation or value engineering. Um, so and then you've got the names of the architects who referred those contractors, yeah, go and go call them up. You've got the, the snippets of the review that they gave. Do you have any quality control over the term, the amount of sort of drawn information that's submitted? Um, it, it's something that we get asked a lot, actually, at the moment. So yeah. It's, it's, um, actually, yeah, because you, you, you had one that was a, what, a building control drawings, right? Yeah. And I think it's something like, again, there's this um, push and pull from the homeowner mm. who wants a lot of the time to pay as little as possible for design up front, which I think is a terrible idea. You want to have as much design up front as appropriate for your project so that you can get the, the most accurate price, mm. um, but also not scaring off the builder with a tome of, of information that they're, then they're going to look at yeah. it and go... That's a typical rookie, well, yeah, yeah, well, rookie no, error. So no, this is, this is interesting because from an architect's perspective, often you know the more information, yeah, that's the, the you know we kind of think the better because yeah. the more information that we give the builder, then there's you know there's 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 less room for wriggle room, mm-hmm. and this is often something you'll hear architects as as, as a selling point will be Definitely. like you know, we we yeah. produce so much built information, but actually that 
cause that can have the ad opposite effect. Absolutely, yeah. I think there's yeah. that there's no exact science. I think it's a bit of a bit of an art, but I think it's got to be appropriate for the size of the project. Mm. Um, and I think it's something that we are being asked about a lot. Like, what's an appropriate number of drawings? How detailed should they be um, to satisfy building control, but also to make sure we get the most accurate cost back from the builders and we have a comparative like for like tender we don't get one person that's giving you summaries and one person that goes down to the detailed uh, nail um, so yeah it, it it's something that we were hoping to evolve yeah. with um, but at the moment we're using architect schedules of works so we're using what information you give us mm -hmm. to then police that through the tender and make sure it's been used and appropriately and, and given a price against. Um, so yeah, I think we, we want to do some workshops on this as well with architects, with yeah. our users and find out to come to a, a position which is uh, you know happy medium. Fascinating, absolutely love it. Really, really exciting um, platform and I'm mm. really excited to see how it grows. Um, I want to uh, quickly, before we wrap up, um, talk about you guys have got a the modern studio and yep. I'm, you know, I'm a big lover of all architectural podcasts. How's that going? What's what has been the impetus behind doing that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we share some some people that we've interviewed. Um, I think you know, we've had some really interesting innovators mm. uh, and heroes of architecture. So we have three. We have three. It's, it's essentially a blog um, uh, interviewing uh, architectural um, owners or studio owners. And it has the three themes. Maybe you want to get into the three themes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got innovators, heroes, and experts. Um, and those three themes are really around what our users want, what we're asking us questions about. You know, smaller teams trying to look to, to be introduced to, to larger practices and, and hearing what their lessons are. Um, how do they do that? Mm. You know, what technology do they use? So that's the innovators. Yeah. The heroes are those who have have managed, I don't know, to grow very quickly or to jump from one type of architecture to the other. Um, so it's it's really like um, uh, getting, it's it's what we were talking about uh, before, how a uh, closed network architecture mm. is, and we're trying to open it up, so open up the sharing of ideas. So in the interviews, people are um, are sharing um, how they're using software or new software, like Thomas Miller is so innovative in, in his use of, of yeah, photogrammetry and yeah, yeah. And exactly and even his his building a rope um, uh, slack um, uh, 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 data um, uh, um, robots the, yes the, the bots and exactly and using platforms to link up other platforms. exactly where you can call up data from your from your um, uh, a studio um, basically database in, in, a, in, a, in an instant so I think it's it's that is what fr frustrates me is the fact that in software everyone shares things are open source um, most uh, um, platforms are open source today um, and, and everyone can contribute and that 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 knowledge share means the industry just grows at a phenomenal pace and it benefits everyone. Mm. Whereas I think in, in the same, we like to see that in architecture and, and people sharing well, it, drawings it, one day. It, yes, and that that is, again, <clears throat> really super exciting. And we've had things, you know, perhaps like Architecture for Humanity or uh, Cameron Sinclair was doing like wiki houses and open source yes, designs exactly. for, for, for housing. But this should be a, an industry san, uh, standard. And we're seeing practices like Bride and Wood who are kind of leading the way in many ways of open source details but for smaller residential practices I mean mm. there are there are websites websites where you can kind of get you know standardized details but this this is a very cultural thing and most architects mm. if you ring them up and I've done this before if I wanted a detail of something you ring them up and you know can I have this yeah. how did you do that most architects are quite happy to, yeah, exactly. to, to, to do it to share it but to introduce that as a culture and have mm. it as a yeah. again another system for us just to sort of lean back into. I think that's actually interesting. Joe Cohen of Joe Cohen Architects, she actually pretty much a direct quote of what she says. There should be a more open way of being able to share how someone's introduced a new technology, a modern method of construction, uh, and how that they've adapted that. And what do their clients think? And you know, how does that work with the mortgage companies who's buying the property? You know, mm. how does those sort of details and introduction and adoption of new technologies? Uh, it, it would it would accelerate the quality of yeah. buildings 
like tenfold. I mean, it's like, you know, when we talk about vernacular architecture, one of the reasons why vernacular yeah. architecture is so wonderful is because it's a tradition yeah. that's evolved over thousands of years that anybody can, you can always lean into the tradition for the expertise, if you like, or lean into the tradition for quality. Mm. And then the current way that we can make buildings is that information isn't as freely distributed. Everybody's reinventing the wheel, which means that there can be these peaks and troughs in, in mm. quality. And it's interesting that you know, your platforms begin to sort of open mm. that up and it's starting that conversation about the importance of open sourcing. Exactly, sharing. Sharing. And, and, and being actually connected without, without necessarily being in the same room, mm. which I think is uh, particularly important in, in, in these current times. And actually going back to that, <clears throat> our, our, our obviously uh, our focus and speciality is, is software. And so what, what, what we're now running um, and accelerating um, is, 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 is a learning from architectural studios that work really well as a, as a team online, remotely using cloud software like Slack um, and, and, and sharing of, of, of communication and, and drawings, taking those learnings and teaching um, anyone um, uh, 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 new studios uh, on webinars um, via our websites um, how to how to structure this how mm. to get how to get started um, what what the best ideas are Amazing. so it's kind of that sharing of of how to do things that, in that, a remote um, that becomes very culture. exciting because you start we start decoupling if you like from the studio and we were talking about this yeah. uh, earlier on about and the massive potential for young architects to yeah. to build up a or to drop into a sort of a massive amount of experience to build bespoke teams and to mm. be able to build quite a unique online remote culture again it's exactly. not for, it's not for everybody but it's totally possible and we can start to yeah, see yeah reduce your you reduce your office costs there's there's, you, what, there's quite a good tip actually from one of the other people that we've interviewed John Ackroyd of Ackroyd Larry he's mm. got one at the moment because of the fact that we're in this coronavirus moment and he to be connected to his clients he's actually sending them um, a VR goggles so that he, they can still experience uh, the designs that yeah how making. much do they cost they cost yeah, like, like £8 £10, 10 pounds yeah. online like so a little couple. tricks like that it's great to see architects that we're in, uh, bringing on to the, the modern studio are, are offering up as, as yeah. ways I mean the, the opportunities in technology are just, just massive from endless profit architectural architectural profit um, their, their client experience um, team team happiness sort of young teams they love software and they're crying for it and some, they're getting kind of roadblocked by the owners who are a bit scared of it yeah. and so I think this, the, the culture of communication can just massively but, improve yeah exactly and there is a young generation of architects who are so already fluent in social media and understand yeah. the fact that you know the power of being able to broadcast yourself or use social media as, yeah. as a way of communication that can be deeply embedded into the culture of new forms of architectural practice definitely and you know the kind of platforms like what like like weaver are you know kind of beginning to allow that and facilitate that exactly exactly and so i mean uh, you know simple thing like how, how did your colleague review the last engineer's performance on the project um could be could be shared instantly and and you know you yeah, it should be something that, that that's easily done online um, within your within your practice without having to pick up a phone or disturb them. Amazing, gentlemen! Thank you so much for the, for for sharing. Uh, thank you. Uh, your platform. Exciting times. Yeah, yeah really thank great. you very much. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening, and don't forget to book your fifteen minute chat with me by using the link in the information. I look forward to speaking with you. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.